Hi, this is the Science Chef. In this video, we'll be answering the 2017 YGC Alternative to Practical Question 2. If you like what we've been doing in this channel, kindly give us a like, subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so, and turn on your notification bell to always stay updated with our new uploads. Alright, let's start. Question 2. A is a simple salt. The following tests were carried out on A. Complete the following table. Test, observation and inference. Test A, I. A plus distilled water and stirred. We are required to give the observation and the inference is A is a soluble salt. Then A, I, I. The observation is tons blue litmus red and we are required to give the inference. In the observation for A, I, since the inference says A is a soluble salt, it means that A dissolved in water. But we also need to state the color of the solution that was formed. And to do that, we have to read through the question to see subsequent tests that were carried out on A, whether there was a colored ion or a colored precipitate that was formed or not, it was, or it was just a white precipitate. As you can see from here, you observe that AA kills plus sodium hydroxide in drops gives us white gelatinous precipitate. So for the fact that it gives us a white precipitate, it means that it is not a colored ion that is present. It can either be zinc, aluminum or lead. And if it is any of those three, then the solution here would be what? A colorless solution, right? So our observation here would be what? A dissolves to give a colorless solution. In France, A is a soluble salt. Now, the next test here was carried out to test the effect of solution of A on litmus. And we are told that it turns blue litmus red. So, a substance or a solution that turns blue litmus red means that that solution is what? Acidic, not necessarily an acid. Remember, we are told that A is a simple salt. So you, you cannot write A is an acid. If you write A is an acid as your inference, you are wrong. Rather, solution of A is acidic or A aqueous is acidic, right? So our inference will be what? Solution of A is acidic and what happens here it means that the salt has undergone hydrolysis it means that the salt is not a salt of a strong acid and a strong base because for a solution to be acidic it means that it is a salt of a strong acid and a weak base all right so let's move on let's look at the next test aii the test is a aqueous, the solution obtained from the first test, plus sodium hydroxide aqueous in drops. We are told that a white gelatinous, now gelatinous what? Precipitate is formed. For the fact that it is a gelatinous precipitate, it has disqualified one of the white ions, which I mentioned earlier, that is what? Lead to iron. So, only zinc and aluminum ion will give us what white gelatinous precipitate so zinc and aluminum ion or aluminum ions present zinc or aluminum ions present in our last video we published tips on how to carry out your salt analysis with ease and we broke down how to identify each of these salts or each of these ions in terms of their colors the nature of their precipitates and whether they form precipitates or not and the various observations that would be made when they react with sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia and also other reagents needed to identify the various anions with accompanying notes to explain the reactions. It was a detailed work that we did so if you are yet to watch that video check the link in the description but to, to help you understand better how to answer questions 
on qualitative analysis, especially the alternative to practicals version. So we move to the next step. The next test says then in excess. So what happened here? The white deleterious precipitate that was formed in drops with sodium hydroxide dissolved or it became what soluble when the sodium hydroxide was added in what excess. So this confirms that zinc or aluminum ions is present. But note that this is not a confirmatory test for any of these ions. This only shows that the ions present are what amphoteric. So the next test with aqueous ammonia will let us know the actual ion that is what present. If zinc ion is present, it will form a white precipitate with ammonia in drops and then dissolve in what excess. If it is aluminum ion that is present, it will only form a white precipitate with aqueous ammonia in drops but will not dissolve in excess. So let's see. So as you can see here, A aqueous, that's another portion of solution of A plus aqueous ammonia in drops. We are required to fill the observations. But let's see the next step. Then in excess precipitate insoluble. So it means that from the first test there was a precipitate that was what formed and we will be required to state the color and nature of that precipitate which is what white gelatinous right so that will be white gelatinous precipitate was formed so that also tells us that zinc and aluminium or aluminium ions are what present or is present anyone either zinc or aluminium ion is what present now it is the next step the next step that's when aqueous ammonia is added in what excess that differentiates between these two ions precipitate insoluble because the precipitate is insoluble it means that aluminum ion is what present if the precipitate had dissolved we would have concluded that or we have confirmed that zinc ion is what present but since the precipitate did not dissolve it means zinc ion is absent and definitely aluminum ion will be what present so aluminum 3 plus present or you can say aluminum 3 plus confirmed because based on your syllabus is the only ion that will form a white gelatinous white gelatinous precipitate with aqueous ammonia in drops and then the precipitate will be insoluble in excess aqueous ammonia if you are getting any value from this tutorial kindly hit the like button subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell to always learn more all right the last test here it says Aqueous solution of A plus aqueous FeSO4 plus concentrated H2SO4. If you watch the last video we uploaded, you notice that wherever you have freshly prepared ion 2, tetrodosulfate 6, and concentrated H2SO4 as the reagents to be used for testing ions, right? The ion that will be tested for or that is being tested for will be what? Trizonitrate 5-ion, which is what is stated here under inference it means that the ion that is present in this aqueous solution that's the anion that is present in this aqueous solution is the trials nitrate 5 ion why because of the aqueous uh, ion 2 titles of phase 6 and concentrated h2so4 that were used we are now required to what state the observation of course whenever you use this reagent with an unknown solution containing the trials nitrate 5 ion the only observation that will show, that will confirm that trizonitrate 5 ions is or are present is what? A brown ring. It's the formation of a what? Of a brown ring. Precisely at the junction of the acid and aqueous layer, right? I had explained the chemistry of the reaction in our last video on salt analysis made easy. Please ensure you watch it because you have a lot to learn from it. Alright? So, with this, we have come to the end of this analysis. But let's see if there's any other question. You have question BI here. 2BI, which says, name the salt A 
Now, from the analysis we have carried out, we have seen that A, salt A contains what? Aluminum ion and the trouser nitrate 5 ion. Name, what would be the likely name of salt A? Aluminium trioxo nitrate 5. Please, it's trioxo nitrate 5, not nitrate, not aluminium nitrate. It's aluminium trioxo nitrate 5 salt. Okay, I have to write the formula of A. That would be AL into what? NO3 bracket what? 3. This 3 here is for the valency of what? Aluminium. While the valency of the trouser nitrate 5 ion is 1. So that's why you have AL bracket NO3 3. Let me explain once again. We have aluminium ion and the trouser nitrate 5 ion. Aluminum has the valency of 3, trouser nitrate 5 has the valency of 1. So with the exchange of radicals, you will have what? Al1 bracket NO3 into what? 3. So remember 1 will always be invisible. So that gives us that formula Al into NO3 3. So that brings us to the end of this tutorial. On the solution of the 2017 YGCE related to practical qualitative analysis. So, if you were able to learn anything, kindly give us a like, subscribe to this channel, and turn on your notification bell. And as you prepare for your GCE, if there's any topic that you want us to treat, kindly drop it in the comment section and be rest assured that we'll attend to it. So, until you come your way next time, always endeavor to be a better version of yourself until I see you, then I'll see you.